I just got back from seeing Thor, Love and Thunder, and I got to say, I liked it. What's up, YouTubers of the world? Mega Geek Mixer here has returned to give you guys my review and non-spoilery thoughts on Thor Love and Thunder. Yes, guys, after a month of being away and waiting for Thor to come out, I finally saw it, and now I'm here to give you guys my review of it. But let me first just, just say that if I were to rank it among all four Thor movies, I'd say it's the second best, in my opinion. Right, right behind Thor Ragnarok and right and right above um um, Thor the original and then Thor the Dark World. I put Dark World as last one because that one really didn't hit me as well. All's the same though. I really like this film. A romantic comedy with a lot of comedy and romance going on around there. And there's even a love triangle in all this here. And and I'm not going to say what kind of love triangle it is because for those of y'all who haven't seen it, I want you to see it yourselves and then you'll know exactly the kind of love triangle I'm talking about. Because it's not what you think for some of y'all who do know then y'all know exactly what i'm talking about because <laughs> it's very funny i won't den deny that but not only that this film is also a family film so if you have a family especially if you have kids take your kids to see this because they're going to enjoy a one pacific scene that is going to make them as kids very happy and you'll f see it at the during the final act of the movie because when even when i saw that i was like well, okay, I'll be, I'll be, excuse me, I don't want to say that word really, but hey, language, so just say it, I'll be damned. <laughs> Either way, all's the same though, yeah, I thought this was pretty good here, the, the romantic comedy, and not only the romantic comedy, but when he got into the serious mode, we all, all of us in the theater I was at, we were at the edge of our seats, and when it came to all, all the comedy, we were all laughing, we were having a good time with it, and that's what's so great about movies, and when all the audience can feel in the same mood together, and pretty much have their same thoughts, if not have a mild agreement on the film right there. But not only that, what I also liked about this movie is that this guy, did the director, he didn't shy away from the fact that he took inspiration from Jason Aaron's run on Thor on the Mighty Thor with Jane Foster as Thor because in this film you see many Easter eggs that are callbacks to Jason Aaron's run on on Mighty Thor and not and not only that, you also get to see see some things from Thor, God, God of Thunder, because don't forget who our villain is, Gore, the God Butcher. And if y'all seen that storyline, you'll see some inspirations from that storyline as well. But there's also another one, another famous one from another famous Marvel storyline, Original Sin. Yes, there's a major Easter egg from the Original Sin that's deeply tied to Thor. And for some of y'all who have read that comic comic story, then you know exactly what I'm talking about and know that, yes, it, that Easter egg is in that film, but it's going to be a little different compared to what it was in the original Sin. And uh, but all's the same, though, I am really glad he gave a lot of inspiration callbacks to us that I was like, this feels just like it, even if it may be in the film. Even though it was in comics, to see it come to life in film was amazing. I was like, yes, I like this. I really like what he's doing there. Nice way to bring inspiration to it. Even though I knew it was an inspiration of the comics, though, I also saw it as its own thing. Because you know how these MCU films go they may take inspirations from some comics out there and stuff of marvel but that doesn't mean that they, that doesn't mean they put their own t little twist and turn to it because that's exactly what they did even with this film but now having said that though let me get into my other positive thing and my pros about this film and that is the characters the three main characters being Thor, Jane Foster, and Gore. So, for Thor and Jane Foster, we get to really explore what their relationship was like, both in the past and in the present, to how it all comes together at the conclusion of this film. And it was really great. I, I unlike many other people, like, not all that big on the whole Jane and Thor thing. Not to say that I hated, hated it, because in the original film, in the first film, I actually felt their connection instead. 
stuff. It was in Thor 2 where I was like, I wasn't feeling it. Mostly because I didn't like what they did with Jane's character and, and how it was. she was just pretty much a plot device there and that it didn't really explain much with her relationship with Thor other than the fact that she was looking for him, he finally returns. Sure, they're catching up, but they're too distracted by the fact that Jane, who's used as the plot device for the ether, is what's the, the whole thing about that. But here in Thor Love and Thunder, they really took it to the next level as they showed Thor and Jane Foster Thor and Jane Foster's chemistry. Yes, Chris Helmsworth and Natalie Portman really showed the connection even better than what it was ever shown before for us. And I'm really glad they gave it to us and it really helped the film and make it be as good as what it was. But not only that, you also get to see their their journeys as individual characters in this film. Like take for example Thor. We're seeing how he's been ever since he left in Endgame and we get to see how his character is here and what the arc and journey he's going through all throughout it all throughout into film to the conclusion it gives us in this film, which all I'll say is that was that was not what I was expecting, but it was pretty nice. It's not it's not great, mind you, but it was still pretty good. It left me satisfied. I liked it. And the same would go for Jane Foster. She has her own individual journey here too, some of which is also inspired from the comic inspiration of Jaren, Jason Aaron. But like I said, guys, non-spoilery, so I'm not going to say exactly what it was. All I just let you know is that it was, it was pretty sad for her in some spots, but it was also good to see in some spots as well, especially when she was playing as Mighty Thor. She really showed why, why she's worthy of the Mighty Mighty Thor title. But now, having said that, what about the villain, Gore? Gore, he's pretty much the third best villain that the MCU has put out for us. The way I rank the villains in MCU is you got Loki, Thanos, and then Gore as my best villains of that of the MCU series so far. You got Loki, who they made sure to always keep, even though it looked like he died, he always came back to life. Then Thanos, with his whole snap the fingers, destroy half of the universe, all because it's getting too pull. It's too populated and stuff and all that. And then you got Thor here, a sympathetic character who is out to take out all these gods all because all because he feels they have failed him. And I yeah, I guess in a way maybe I did spoil something there for you guys, but not really. Cause it, if you guys know the gore, the God Butcher God Butcher storyline, or if you did research on them, then you'll know that yes, the gore in that comic is pretty much the gore in this movie. But it does take a few different directions here and there, but also has some things that from the comics that are in this film as well. But all in all, though, Kristen Bale, he did a great job. I have never really seen him as a villain. I've only seen him in the Dark Knight and the Dark Knight movies. And if I've ever seen him voices anything that might have been a villain, I never recognized it. But here, this is my first time ever seeing him in a villain role, and he nails it greatly. He shows the he shows the sadisticness, the anger and stuff that makes him angry at gods. And but you also see the sympathy for him at the very beginning of the film that you just can't help but feel for the guy and that and that right there guys that's pretty much most of the pros of this film but what about some of the cons well for the most part one of my main problems with this film is that it is too short it is too short for a thor movie especially considering we're in phase four and how most of the movie movies that have come out have been over two hours yet yeah, this one is just straight on two hours, if not a little less. I would have done with some 15 or 30 extra minutes in this film that could really have established a few more things in here. Because I won't deny that the pacing was pretty much okay, but in some spots it was like you could have put a little more detail into this to make it more intensifying to get us even more emotionally into it than we already were, if not some of us weren't into it enough. And that's what I'll say right there. And an example of that is saying how it didn't take long for Thor to realize who it was that had his mule near, that being Jane. And not only that, while I do like the romantic comedy they put in there, I do admit there were some spots where there was a little too much comedy in it. But even still, though, it wasn't enough to, like, say, okay, okay, give us a break. Calm, let us calm down. I was still having fun with it, but I was knowing maybe a little too much on there. 
And then finally, my other gripe with it would be that some of the characters, such as Kor and uh, Valkyrie, they really take a back seat in this film. They're still there, and they still have some moments and stuff, but they really have that bit of a back seat into the film, kind of like it was with Jurassic World Dominion, when you got people like Blue and Owen Grady and and Owen Grady and uh, what was her name, Claire, they all pretty much take back seats in that film. And that's kind of how it is with them. But even still, though, it wasn't enough to hurt the movie so much that I was like, no, I don't like this movie. Because I have heard some reviewers and YouTubers out there, they didn't like it. And hey, that's fine. If they didn't like it, that's them. Me, I like this film. It was good. It's the second best Thor movie, in my opinion, out of the Thor films. That's just me, though. I respect everyone's opinion and and if they didn't like it all good all good but is there is there anything else i should say about this film mm, you know what maybe none maybe not uh oh yes oh yes i near i think there is at least one more thing i forgot to mention and that is in the fact on how at the fight that the final battle or you know what no no just stop, Chris. Just stop before you go into spoiler territory. After all, remember, this is not spoiler review here, people. <laughs> all the same, though, guys, I did like the film. If I were to give it the score on a movie critic standpoint, a 7.5 out of 10, it was pretty good for what it was. If I'm going to give it a in the MCU point of view, I guess I will be a nice guy and give it an 8 out of 10. But all in all, I love the film, and I recommend you go see it. And if you like it, cool. If you don't like it, that's fine, too. I might even go see it again this upcoming week. But until then, if you enjoy my videos, all I got to do is click that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to be notified when I make more videos. And until then, Mega Geek Mixer, signing out. Bye!